somebody has been in that territory before you came. So you just, just say, I'm taking territories. There are monsters that are there before you. And you don't, you don't destroy or defeat those monsters by your own power, by your own strength. But you defeat them by the Holy Spirit, by anointing, by the grace of God, by warfare, by strategies. Now if you look at this very well, I, won't, I may not follow the outline. So you have the outline. But I just want to illustrate. Just have you sitting there. Are you seeing it? Okay, if you are not seeing it, come this area. Even if you have to stand in between the rules, I need you to see what I want to say. I beg your pardon for that. I'm not commanding you. I'm just advising you. Yeah, if you have to sit among on the passageway, please come. Come and sit. Yeah, you can move. Come and sit. And come and see this. It's practical enough. That outline, this is the summary. This is the summary. Yes, please. Come around. Come and sit. That outline, this is the summary. Or oh, this is the graphic picture. That outline. Graphic picture. And there are things I like to point out there for you. Now, this is a community. And if you see that community, there are churches, there are houses in that community. Now, this is the foundation of that community. And most of our communities, in our streets, in our, where our churches are located, where our ministries are located, if I, where we build houses, in our streets, and all those things. This is a picture of that. Now, I build this based on what the Bible says, what Jesus says, especially in Matthew chapter 4. I hope I'm not blocking you here. Or am I? Okay, I'll be blocking you once in a while. Every community, but what I want, to, okay, if you see the houses in those communities and the churches, wherever you see this, those are churches. Those are churches. Those are churches. And there are houses. And there are mosques also there. There are mosques. Now, and if you don't watch very well, you might not get what is happening there. If you see that every church, in every street, there is a mosque not far from it. Hello? That's number one. Number two, every church and every house, there's also an altar not far from it. These are the altars. There are altars under the ground and there are altars on top of the ground. Those are the, the sacrificial, ritual, powerful, covenanted altars of the monsters that that community was handed into their hands. You don't see them with physical eye because this is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. But sometimes, the power comes from there, but they manifest here also. One more thing. In every street, you see devil there, demons there. They operate. They strategically place themselves. And when you watch it, they are not so far from those altars. And they are not far from houses and from churches. What does that tell you? And when you travel our communities, you see all these things. Now, that's for that. The devil did that strategically. Because the devil is a strategic devil. Eshisa. To feel loud. Thank you, sir. Yeah, better hour. Better hour. Now, this is the strong man. If you read Gospel of Saint Luke, chapter 11, 22-23, is in your outline there. And in the book of Matthew also, Jesus says, you cannot go to the house 
of a strong man. Except you do what? If I, this is the house of the strong man. It can be a street. It can be a house. It can be a community. It can be a uh, it can be an area. It can be a territory. But this is the territory. This is the house of the strong man. That's a dark figure there. A certain demonic power. Demonic deity. And if you read Matthew chapter 4 very well, that's what happened. You interpret Matthew chapter 4 as a temptation that Jesus was tempted. But me, I always interpret as a power encounter. Because Jesus has to conquer this guy. And if he what comes from him, from the sword of his son, from his authority, darkness, danger, evil, permeates the community. And wherever it's ruling and reigning, of course, you will see violence there. You see bloodshed in there. You see poverty there. You see penury there. You see lack of interest in the things of the law. You see death there. You see all kinds of evil happening. You can attribute them happening. His government, oh, his people, oh, but the true thing, spiritually, it comes from this guy. The few Christians that are doing warfare in the church, that's where you see the sun of righteousness shining. That's Malachi. That the sun of righteousness will rise up. It's because of the few prayers that Christians are praying. I was sharing with Reverend Fallow doing this morning. Uh, my people were praying last week uh, because somebody said he saw vision that in Nigeria there's riot, there's war, there's problem. People are running at Tasketa and all that. And we start saying, but Lord, we are prayed now. We are prayed. Didn't you answer the prayer to remove this thing? The Lord said he has answered, but that the voices of sin coming from Nigeria is more than the voice of prayer. I have a shedding innocent blood, killing people, kidnapping people, destroying people. The Lord say the voice of sin that is arising from Nigeria is more, more than the voice of prayer. That's why today we will pray. And you too should start praying and continue to pray in your church. Because that is the example of what is happening. You can see that darkness or the, the evil that comes from him is much more than the little lights that are coming. That's why not only must we pray, must do work of righteousness, must preach righteousness, and we too must not be part of the evil. Because if we are part of the evil and we are still praying, God will not answer. The light will be dark. I mean, the light will not shine. Darkness will be permeated. That's the picture of our community. If you can put this picture in your heart, use it. That the prayer will pray that God will open your eyes to see your community. That's why when you pastor a church in this kind of community, you are not only a pastor of that local church, inside church, you are a pastor of the community. Unfortunately, you know the unfortunate church is in this kind of community. They don't work together. We work against each other. We pray against each other. We see each other as competitor. Why this is our enemy? Having a nice time. May the Lord open our eyes. May the Lord deliver his church. These are monsters in our community. Until we can defeat them, sir. There is no territory taken home. Am I talking to anybody? Do you understand? Okay. Let me look at a little place in the outline. How did they come? Now the question is, how did they come? Carry your little outline. You see there. Open door for the monsters. Okay, who do I refer to as the monster? That's the devils and the demons. Those are fallen angels. They were good angels before. But they fell with Satan. So they became monsters. That's why they have hope. They became monsters. And those of you that picture Satan as having son that's a monster. It's because they are fallen angels. And once they fall from God, they lose their glory. They lose their hair. And what they do is to kill men. They hate human beings. And you know why? They believe that if they can finish human beings, they are getting back at God. 
So they use human being. They use creatures of God to get back at him. Say, so these are the works of your hand that you say is very good. And when we destroy the work of your hand, you will feel the pinch. That's just the simple reason Satan is at work. And moreover, the church, our Lord Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not do what? It's a promise. So, but if you don't fight, they will prevail. No? He has conquered. Yes. We have the victory in his name, in his blood, in his word, by his spirit. But at the same time, we need to go and gather the spoils. This guy is still here working. And how do you open the door? You can see there, human traumas and fears. Our forefathers that started this kind of community. What they do is that, you know in those days, they use human sacrifice. Somebody can come to town and come to the village and say, Shakpana, chicken paws, and evil wants to come. One strange animal, one strange sickness, one strange disease is coming to destroy the people of this town, this city, this country, this kingdom. What would they do? Sacrifice human beings. And they go and build altars. That's the altars you see. They are under the ground. But they go and build those altars. Of course, to the devils. Of course, to the strong man. So most of our community, don't you see the name? I remember a pastor, I think he's here. He planted his church somewhere. And he has fasted and fasted and fasted. You know the name of the place? Obawole. You know the literal meaning of that? The king enter ground alive. You know go die Lila Saint Joseph. You know go die Lila Saint Joseph. Uh -huh. The king enter ground alive. Obawole. And in that place, ha. Ah, there's another community not far from there called Okute die suddenly. That's the meaning of Akute. Okute die suddenly. Okute and churches die suddenly there because of the covenant. Okute. I remember in Oshogo there's a place called Aleku Wodo. That is, you pursue death enter the river that's why all the rivers okay there's no picture of river here all those rivers all those little streams that pass through your church hey but we can conquer i remember dr luca i told a story that's part of territory taking in that only carry wire that they are when he received the vision he told the story uh, just last week at the 30th anniversary. He was living in one room. That's where he received the vision. At a medical road. In that Yaba estate. Because he was a medical student there. He lived with friends, fellow students there. That's where he received the vision. And by 12 years later, he went to buy just one room. Just one room. One house. Not far from that Unilag University Road. They started house but because they know the principle of warfare and you know if you know unilag and know that only care wire there's a little river as it's a swamp now uh -huh. and they have done it well now he just brought prayer warrior to be praying they pray together day and night day and night for more than six months until they hear the voice everybody pray heard a voice one demon inside the water say ah 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 you are ah, ah. you have trouble with your prayer so I leave this place for you people go there today they bought over about three four streets it's part of territory taking sir you, are, you even bought one plot of land very soon they sell half plot they sell until they remove you from that place you are not taking that territory it's not your landlord though. am I talking to somebody and I too I once pastor in a place like that when we newly opened the church my church I wasn't the pastor 
I'm a Magio. They went and do three days crusade. Actually, it was two nights crusade. Because one of the day, the generator refused to work. Of course, it's not that the generator is not good. But it's your brother. It's your brother. So eventually, we did two days. And they gave me about, I remember, about 20 souls with names. That for Francis start the church with this. And they gave me about five other brother and sister to be my foundational members. That's how we start. I didn't know when they when they went there. They built, they bought, I mean, okay, we didn't buy they rent one half plot near the Barless house. And the Barley was the head of the church. And the church in that community is a red garment church. They came from a larger Esheldo in their own state. Don't interpret it. Just hear it and leave it there. By the time we visit those 20, 10 of them, wrong address. The rest 10, 8 of them says they have their church already. Only 2 that say we will come to church. And one of them never came till today. The other one that came, he drank, drank, drank until he died. So literally, I had to start afresh. When we preach and pray, whole services in the night, Jesus will appear to me in the morning, on Sunday morning. Nobody will come. You know, you are so full. You want to preach, but there's nobody to preach to. So one Sunday, I was standing at the door. Everybody passing by. Say, ah, Lord, let this one branch. Let this one branch. Let this one come. The person will pass away. I'll say, hey. And that's already 11. And when I look at that statue, not only those five people. So I'll just go back. I'll turn into prayer. I remember the second Sunday, I was standing at that door. At the other side of the street, the other row of houses. Somebody was standing also in front there. So he beckoned to me that I should come. That's a school. I think it's a primary or secondary school. The guy said I should come. And I went to him. He said, uh -huh. So, you are the pastor of this new church? I said, yes, sir. Ah. He said, let me advise you. You are too young. Don't come and die here. That's the advice he gave to me. He said, you are too young. I said, well, how do you mean? He said, we have been here three years. We have been here three years. No one single soul. In fact, today is our last service. We are closing church. He said, so I see that you opened last week. I said, before I go today, make I advise you. This place is a difficult place, so you can't plant a church here. And you see, you're a young man. Don't finish your future here. Go and tell your geos that they should transfer you to another place. I said, thank you, sir. I have nothing to say. But when I came back, I called those five people. I said, they say this place, churches don't grow here. But me, I'm too young. And you know I study church growth. I'm too young for my church not to grow. I just have an idea. I say every, every two, two weeks, we'll come here on Friday and we won't leave here until Sunday morning. The food you ate last on Thursday is your food. Friday, we are not eating. We'll drink water. Saturday, we'll drink water. We'll finish it in service on Sunday morning. You know, the moment we started doing that, while I came, I didn't know that. Uh... And I just had this idea of prayer walking. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. Now I just say, You guys, can you go out? Are you courageous? They say, No, sir. I said, Stay inside. Oh, yeah, two of us. Let's go. We'll go to the junction. We'll pray. In fact, I went to the front of that their church by 12 a.m. and pray. And climbs, they dug a hole and did something there. Sort of. I climbed it. I started praying. Don't do that if you are not fasting. You know, by the time we did it for two weeks, to my greatest surprise, by the thoughts that the second Sunday, we do our own in the night. 
early in the morning, that church with that landlord, that our ballet, they also did their own and came in front of our church. And they stayed there. I said, what do they mean? Did they see us in the night? But they have slept now. That was my thinking. So if we do it in the night, they will do it in the morning. I said, oh, yeah, no, sir. If we do it in the night, you do it in the morning. We'll see. You know why we had our breakthrough? His own very son. His very son. His first son got converted. It was during the week. I was just doing Bible study. He didn't come inside. I didn't know he was hiding at the back of our own Paco church. And I gave an altar call. He didn't come inside. He knelt down there. All the prayer I was praying. He was praying it. And he got converted and came in. He said, sir, hey, sir, I have known Jesus. Jesus just saved me now. I said, ha. He said, the prayer you pray. Where are you? You didn't come inside. He said, I was at the back. And you know, he started coming to church. I said, decide him. Then the landlord came one day with cutlass. He said, Pastor, you are very wicked. I said, sir, no. I'm just a JJ person. I don't fight with anybody. He said, yes, you didn't fight with anybody physically, but you are very wicked. I said, how? He said, all the powers that control this community, you have destroyed them. Ah. He said, that's a surprise, sir. He said, pastor, who set you this case with cutlass? I said, no, yes, sir. I'm a pastor. You are a ballet. And you are the head of that church. Don't let us use it physical. You know me, I will do it in the night. And you people will do it during the day. He said, yes. I said, continue. And let's see who we win. Eventually, God gave us more than 100 people in that community. Our, our weapons are not what? Oh, but they are what? To the pulling down of... You can read that. There are three levels. The ground level monsters, the occult level, the territorial level. Yes. Why we should destroy them? You can see them in your outline there. Uh -huh. You can see their manifestations inside churches. Now, where I want us to pray is this. Before we can go out and confront this territorial power in our community. And let me stand a warning. You don't do it alone. You must have trained people. You must have prayer warriors. But where I'm going is that before we go out to do it, let's start from inside church first. Because in many of our churches, the strong man is no longer outside. He has what? In fact, in some cases, down the altar. Pastor G went somewhere. Not far. <laughs> not too long ago he said on a Sunday morning God just opened his eyes he saw is it 21 or 22 people they were walking to the church he was sitting on the altar with his host and he saw people walking entering the church but God just opened his eyes he saw that they were walking backwards they used their back to enter church and he said, he didn't know what came over him. When he stood up to minister, he mentioned it. That 21 of you, you enter this church with your back. Holy Ghost, thunder, fire you today. I know the mistake he made was that he went there alone. He didn't went with his prayer warriors. And in the night, they came and dealt with him. He landed in hospital. Yeah, he landed in hospital. But he came back to the church and brought the prayer warriors. And those people came in the night too. They also came through the wall. And so you saw us. And they made a statement. That church is our own. We are the one that determine what happens there. My prayer. Every demon that is sitting on your altar. The Lord will dethrone them. Because you see. All those forces that has come inside our church. They lies with this one. And you know sometimes, if the devil can't catch you, he will send the agents to you. And unfortunately, we have done that in church. And sometimes, the people we ordain, the people we put in charge, they are agents. But we don't know. 
May our spiritual eyes not be blind. I can't hear your email. Okay, don't worry, you are tired. We'll go and pray now. I even want us to pray and do a lot of prayer. But let's start from inside. Let's start from where? I can't hear you. Let's start from inside. When we start from inside, then we can do it outside. I remember our Baba, Baba Yola. He told us a story at Ibadan. I knew his church many years ago. In fact, I knew him when he left one denomination and started that church. And you know the guy they call Asolo. How many of you are old enough to know that around 85, 86, 87, 88, 90, up to the early 90s, the person that reigned most at Ibadan is Asolo. Asolo. He was a... Baba told me the story. Baba has been in ministry now, going to 55 years without blemish. May God uphold all of us. And yet I see him sitting. He came from me, but for this conference, oh, and you let God share. May God help us share. Now, he said he knows Asolo very well. Asolo was a born again minister, a prayer warrior. Yeah, I feel like I feel I should say this to the daddy. I might be no, and he let suffer me. Say he and Asolo prays together when Asolo was still a genuine Christian. But his church was not growing. And only God knew what happened. He said, I want the crowd. I want the crowd. He went and joined occulty people. And they gave him power. And the sign of the power is that he has something here. He has a boy here. And that boy must not dry up. That was what brought the crowd. Go to Ibadan. Because we don't write stories. Now that's one of the problems we have in churches. We don't write stories. Things just happen. Amazing things. We just sweep it. No story. Nothing. Even so, in both people, they will have written a book on Asolo. But here, we won't write. So, and if you see crowds, and crowds of people, in fact, at our, is it 97? I came to you first, Baba. <laughs> yes. He went and bought a land at a place called Amuloko. You see, as I was passing, driving down, there was traffic jam. Thousands of people before, before you get to his place, there is this Asolo camp. Just about three, four acres. In Ashofat, any, eh? Ten acres. Thank you, ma'am. In Ashofat, and the bus stop. Vehicles make his place. Bus stop. Asolo, 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 Asolo. That's the way they will stop. But Baba's place is inside. You see, track about uh, almost about one or two kilometers before you get to his new church location. So vehicles don't come there. And everybody, Asolo, Asolo, Asolo. And what will Asolo do? He doesn't preach because he has backslidden. He's not into occultism. He'll just say five by seven photograph, something like this. And everybody must have it. That's what you will pray over. That's what you'll be praying to. That's what you and you donate money. Crowds. It was God that inspired Baba. Baba said, when that was the case, say, I know you. I know what you have done. Okay. Baba will go there in the night and walk there and start doing warfare and breaking powers, breaking occulting powers, saying that his power must expire. All the covenant must expire. Before you know it, not quite two, three years, he ran away from Ibadan. He came to Ikorodu, not Lagos, Ikorodu. <laughs> Abi, is, is Ikorodu not different from Lagos? Ikorodu is different. Ikorodu is part of Ogun State. Uh, Mama Soro, Timati Soro. Ikorodu is Ogun State. So, and if you are going along Ikorodu Road now, before you get to Majidu, did you see a solo by the left? That's where he ran to. The hall is almost, if almost bigger than this. 
but it's empty now. And that place, if you drive to Baba's place now, bus stop has passed there. Even that place is empty. Each time I drive past there, I'll be thinking. I said, it's better to do church with Jesus, with Bible, with the truth, and preach the gospel than to do all this, uh, your fake something. It will pay you for some time, but it will expire. Because if this guy backs you up, he will disappoint you. Am I talking to somebody? So in church, sometimes, through our negligence, our carelessness, or going to sin, or keeping quiet, or not doing spiritual warfare, we don't pray again, we don't preach Bible again, we don't check those who we ordain again. Demons have come inside church. But today, we will drive them out. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Before we pray, oh yeah, let's read Acts of Apostles chapter 12, verse 1. That's where we are going to pray. Reverend D, I will look at ready. You are still coming back to lead our prayer. I just lead the beginning. Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. Can somebody read for me? About that time. Uh huh. Step 40, son. To vex certain in. Yes, in the church. Thank you, ma. That's what I want to use. About that time, Herod the king set forth his hand to verse certain in the church. Bring it to this context. This is the Herod today. And any church in this community, he wants to verse them, especially with the leader. When the eternal principle of Satan is that smell the shepherd. And the sheep will scatter. And this guy, this strong man, or Satan, Satan representative, is ready to smite the shepherd of each of these churches. And you know how Satan starts? He took James, the brother of the Lord, and killed him. And when you see that the Jews love that, of course they will love that, because they see that the church is a threat to their Jewish religion. He took Peter. But thank God for the church in verse 5. The church prayed. The church prayed. And pray. Any leader that is here today. That Satan is vexing you. The Lord will deliver you. Yeah. You can vex leaders with your wife. Or with your spouse. There are a lot of leaders with their spouse that Satan is using. You can vex your health. Yeah, it can attack your health. It can attack your health. So you will not be able to do this work very well. It can attack your health. And you know there are some health challenges. We can set to you with prayer. Because it's from the devil. But there are also some health challenges. We have to find some things to help you. Especially supplements. To help you. So as we do prayer, we also do that supplement, it will balance your head. Your head will not break down. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. But we want to pray today. Sometimes you can use your associate against you. Sometimes you can even use your father as your mentors against you. Sometimes you can even use yourself against yourself. If you want to conquer this strong man in our community, this monster, brethren, it has to start from us. Because Jesus says, the prince of this world comes to me. I have what? Not. In other words, there's no property of the devil in my life. There's no sin. There's no immorality. There's no ungodliness. There's no unrighteousness. There's no lying. There's no deceit in my life. There's no ground. There's no unforgiving spirit and, and bitterness in me. Nothing of the devil. It is then you, if you are free like that, it is then you can conquer this. Because if the Satan came to Jesus, he will come to you. Stand up on your feet. If you like, you can go back to your seat. But if you love that place, you can stay there. We want to pray.
every vexation of the enemy. I can't hear you. Every vexation of the enemy. Oh, okay, let's be particular. Every vexation of the strong man over my life and my church, I reject it today. I destroy it today. I break it asunder today. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Every vexation of the enemy, of the strong man, of the monster in my territory, Father, destroy it now. Pray that prayer. In any way, the devil is vexing me through my health, through finance, through my spouse, through my associates. Any way, the devil is vexing me. So that I can give up on this ministry. I destroy the vexation of the devil. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Do you know this song? It's a Yoruba hymn. I want us to sing it very well. Christi Jobare Ki for fighting and for 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 Talafia Ati Talafi Bawo mi rira Bawo mi rira Yo tobi toru Yo tobi toru Akoko no hada Akoko your body, your body, your for them you will not see them I heard 
the story about Prophet Babalola, Joseph Ayo Babalola, that he went to a crusade, he went for a crusade in a city, and then the king of the land said, There is a place, Iguai War. And they gave him that place and said, If you go there, you can't come back. And then he went into that big forest with his prayer team. That is why we are saying you can't do it alone. He went there and they said there is a python, big one, on the mountain in that forest. And the man of God was just saying, Arise, O oh God, and let your enemy in this forest do what? Yeah. You are not say it as if you are the one. Say it as if you are standing in the forest of your own territory. And you want to dethrone all the monsters there. He stood there and just one thing he was saying. He said, Arise, O oh God, and let all your enemies in this forest. Yeah. One more time. Picture your own territory now. Whatever is the governing council, every demonic governing council in your territory is stood in that forest and he said, Oh God, arise and let all your enemies in this forest, all your enemies in our territories, let them! And they said they had people that were with him. They had the full stood of people they were running in the tree everywhere they were scattering jumping on each other and they saw the big python coming and when it crawled down it right there Agbara Pentecost as of old as of old as of if God could do that he will do it again he will do it again he will do it again now in your mind now go to the junction of where your church is located go there now travel there now travel there now Orita, that that place that you know that this is like a seat of the devil in my community go there now now lift up your right hand everybody say i receive, I receive. pastors let's pray say i receive, I receive. sword of fire Every monster, every monster in my community in my territory i cut you asunder in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray use that sword of the lord 